trap, 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 trap. <laughs> Taino AGL. Welcome, people. So, your host, Taino AGL. Today on the Galactic Talk, June 4th, um, there's a, a brother. For me, is an elder at the same time, too. And I've been actually on Facebook uh, coming to his information, Intel. And at the same time, too, he's, he was dropping uh, science there and there. So, without further ado, from Pontiac, Michigan, uh we're welcoming rod a's so brother rod a's uh it's an honor man we didn't know much each other but at the same time too i felt i kind of you know uh know you before so welcome bro yeah thank you thank you yeah so um yeah you had asked me you said we were just going to go over a few topics and try to get the people up to speed to what's taking place in the world and around us and how it affects us directly yeah right so um you were saying that you would be starting off so my um, my name is rod hayes dr rod hayes walk university aka morpheus mysticus megas and um my primary uh i'm I'm what you would call a North American witch doctor, a ancient shaman in modern practice. Um, much of what I do is done in seclusion because of the levels of the mind that has to be accessed. I need, you know, to be able to do shamanistic duties. And one of those are finding out what's going on in the world and why is society as it is. You know, so... <clears throat> We have a lot of uh, things in place in order to maintain the balance of the universe and the balance of the planet. <clears throat> and as part of uh, the duties of the shaman, we was to bring these things to the attention of the people, but the people are not always receptive. So the shaman is normally relegated to the outcasts of society to inform them so that they can figure out ways to reach the inner workings of the modern society because society takes on different forms under different people at different times according to the patterns of life on this planet mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know so we start from there um i like to say i was born a shaman i was born this way and i had to figure out how to adapt my external 3d life to the shamanistic practice that you. way I'm, I'm not um what you would call too distant from society to communicate with the people effectively but at the same time i'm not so intricately woven into the society that i can't see clearly what the afflictions are and how to solve the problem mm -hmm. right so um as my mother was telling me i'm not here to take sides I'm not here to pick one side over the other. I'm just here to fix it. Solve the problem. Problem solved. It's easy to fix. Yeah. It all boiled down to one thing, and that's the unity key. So we're going to use the unity key if that's the only thing that's going to fix it. Anybody that's not part and partial to the unity key, then you know that they have to be excommunicated from the collective. Mm -hmm. It's not personal. It's family business. And we the earth family. We can look to the stars all we don't wait for motherfuckers to pull up in spaceships with motherfucking kicker boxes and speakers on it. But the reality is going to mean that we own Earth. We was born on Earth. We came through the womb of a woman on, that was from Earth, born on Earth. We can't go back to the time when the woman didn't birth the child because, as they say in the Morris literature, time never was when man was not. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can't calculate a time frame, a fixed time frame in which this woman was not producing men. They just wasn't producing mass like they are today. They were produced to fight wars. Right. Besides that, they were a parthogenic culture and they lived in arts and um, artistic expressions of the Shakti, divine feminine energy. 
So where we at now with the shamanistic practices, we're trying to rebuild everything that was torn down under a rogue series of governments globally. So you have the matriarchs of China taking the uh, charter that gave China their right to set up the communist government is now in the hands of the collection of matriarchs in China. And over here, we don't even know it. Right. The same with Japan and Thailand. America's the last place. Every all of the matriarchs everywhere is waiting on American matriarchal solidification in order to switch the system back to what it was before it went rogue. Right. Right. So um, in the American system, part of the reasons it was it was not fixed sooner is because of this contract. In the contract that's being signed uh, in a blood oath, using the blood of the first person to die in the American Revolution as Christmas Atticus. Mm -hmm. This is a replica of an ancient Babylonian cuneiform story where they have to kill a god in order to sub subdue the people. Right. So we thinking that the crucifixion story is the story of resurrection. We didn't know it was a story of enslavement of a people by slaying of the gods, spilling of the blood of the gods on the earth until such time that the earth spirits rebel. Mm -hmm. That's what you call a demon, because now so much of the spirit or the blood of the gods has been spilled on the soil that the earth then wakes up in the enraged motion of earthquakes, tidal waves, you're killing her babies, right? So since you're killing her babies, she's going to she's gonna wake up in a rage. She's a dragon asleep, a giant green dragon curled up in a ball, and we're just walking around on top of her as her children. Mm -hmm. When you wake her up and something ain't right, she's going to balance it out. And in the human arena, where you see humans doing human activity in all nine areas, as spelled out by Dr. Neely Fuller in the United Independent Compensatory Code for breaking the chains of white supremacy, right? So when you know what the nine areas of people activity and you understand that the only way that these things are going to be dealt with is by a mortal man in a human flesh body, nature's right. going to generate that because it's going to be necessary. Nature's going to generate a human being that has to deal with the human problem in order to balance the scales of my or nature. So to bring nature back in this balance, it they have a practice that when nature starts getting out of balance and the humans can see it in the 3D world, they begin to perform rituals around the planet, what we call them tribal rituals, the dances around the fire, we had to update it. So we dance under spotlights in the nightclubs. The ritual the same. We still doing the same conjure. Mm -hmm. We just don't know we doing it now. Yep. And that conjure is going to wake up the spirit of the earth spirit. That's directly tied to the mitochondrial connection with the women. And this is why Elijah Muhammad said the nation can rise no higher than its women. Mm -hmm. And the Morris literature agrees with that. As well as the UNIA literature of Marcus Garvey, you know, as well as W.E.B. Du Bois in his literature, all of them agree that as long as the woman is oppressed within our communities, we are permanently oppressed. And until we break that and liberate the woman, until we restore the matriarchy, we're just going to remain being screwed by the system because the system is designed to screw us until we put the woman on top. Indeed. <clears throat> so, this is what all of those, um, the Morris Women's Consulate, this is their job. That's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. The MGT, GCC, this is mm -hmm. their job. That's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. You know, the nation, the guys in Earth has an Earth Consulate. That's what they're there for. You know, and we don't let nobody get away. If they gangbangers, if they under the six or the, if they under the blue, they got the sisters of the struggle. That's uniting all of those sisters. It's the same with the peace stones and the black and red and the bloods. They all tying back into the vine. That's what they call it. When the matriarch call, 
and the only organization that can facilitate all this within our community that can reach everybody, both the Moors and the indigenous, both the gangbangers and the church women. You know, it's the only people that can reach everybody is the Nation of Islam. So we can say what we want about Farrakhan, but he did something that nobody else did. He gave us a platform if the so God or if the nature spirit was to produce somebody that would come back and put this shit in order, they mm-hmm. need something to start, a point of, of, of focus, a platform or base, something to work from. You don't got nothing to work from, you can't build nothing. Mm-hmm. And he's the only one who has a, a what you call solid in that scaffold to climb this ladder. You know, the Moors have been fragmented ever since since what happened to Drew. Mm-hmm. They've been fragmented ever since then. You know, the wars with Mealy Eel and um and um uh was it Blakely Bay? Going all the way back to the beginning when the Moors split took place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, we are we know what the conjurer's sacrifice of Claude Green is now with the voodoo cult of Islam. We know what that's all about now. Yeah, you know it's not a secret no more. It's in the public domain, mm-hmm. and that's the problem. All this is put out in the public domain because we didn't know why we was oppressed. Mm-hmm. It didn't make sense to us when our ancestors lived so lavish over here. All, how we go from living lavish to living like paupers? <clears throat> and this was what my job was to discover: the, what did they do? How did it work? Who did what? bring it into the conjure war and don't take a side. The only reason why I have to push harder on the Moors is because them some bad motherfuckers. They was winning and I came from the side that just so happened to be the feathers. Uh But it ain't personal. I don't take it personal. This is my homeland. You know, they they issued the challenge and they was whooping our motherfucking ass. So we got a series of hierarchy that we can call. And sooner or later, mama going to send one of her boys that's going to figure it out. Well, mm-hmm. I'm number seven. And it's been figured out. So now they have to put it all back together and give it back to us. But see, the one of the side effects of the conjure wars, is when this shit is over with, it won't be no more separation between feathers and peasants. We done with that shit. We don't even need that shit no more. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now we just got to do like they say in the lodge, meet everybody on the level and leave on the square. That's it, man. You know what I'm saying? Once we do that, we all right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody bumps straight. Mm-hmm. No credit, no debt. You can't have no slave. That's right. No credit, no debt. You can't have no slave. Their system is designed on a credit debt scenario based off fiat currency that has no true value. It's monopoly money to lure you into a system of debt and um, loans so that they can hold you in bondage. Indeed. That's the trick. Uh-huh. You know? Mm-hmm. So the Moors brought the law over here that they the ones set the fi- foundation, they the ones set the rules. We played by their rules, but they didn't. Uh-huh. They were never supposed to play by their rules because they was at a distinct disadvantage. Uh-huh. That distinct di- disadvantage is the last motherfucker to be called would be thought. And they already know they're not going to outsmart this motherfucker. They already know he's going to put this shit together. They already knew this. Both sides knew this. So then here he is putting this shit together in their face in real time. Stacking the bricks on top of the bricks until we get to the motherfucking capstone. Yep. So the only way you're going to know who he is, he got to be the master of masters, but he had to be a self-raised master. That means he had to go out and discipline his own self because can't nobody else discipline him because he won't accept it. That means he had to go out and teach his own self because can't nobody else teach him because he won't accept it. You know what I'm saying? When you got this unruly character, how do you teach him? You don't. You just make the knowledge available. He's going to grab the relevant shit and put it in the order that it go in. It's just the nature of the monkey man. And that's why his symbol in Egypt was the, a ring, was the uh, baboon. 
And that's why over here is King Kong, that's Thoth, reclaiming the empire. That's why he's on top of the empire state. The reason they shoot him off is because that's the ambition. They don't want him to never get up there. But once he's up there, it's a wrap. Well, they can wrap this shit up. They can put it in the shoe box. They can put it in the candy box. They can put it in the cake box. Hell, they can put it in the refrigerator box. The ice box, this don't matter to me. Mm-hmm. This shit a wrap. Yeah. All I know is Pandora box has been put back together because there's only one mental that's capable enough to process to that magnitude to put that shit back together. It's like trying to unscramble an egg. It's damn near impossible, but it ain't. Mm-hmm. It can be done, but very few can do it. Maybe only just one. You know, so we unscrambled this motherfucking egg. Put each motherfucking egg back in the carton where it go. Mm-hmm. And then we take the whole carton because it all go together. It's still one dozen. Twelve signs of the Zodiac, the 12 sections of the order of the round table. The Moorish order of the round table. We all know CMB, Charles Mosley Bay. If you don't, we ain't up on our shit. If we don't know who Ravana Bay is, we playing game. That's real talk, man. Yeah. If we don't know who Empress Tierra Verde Asti Garcinelle Bay is, we sitting here, tra- we cracking jokes. Indeed, bro. If we put Malachi you are not a martyr, we a damn fool. If we think that Larry Hoover and Jeff Force some gangbangers, then we, we really got out, we really lost. If the people don't recognize the chiefs, the chiefs can't restore the land. So this is where we at with it. Whether they was were Moorish or indigenous, the kind of were over. I said that shit is enough. I'm the high chief of the land. The games went on long enough. Call went out. The right knocks was given. The right motherfucking answers was handed over. The keys was put in the locks and the motherfucking doors was open. Now they can let the kings back to the land to restore this shit. You know? Right. It's like if if somebody don't do it, who how it's gonna get done? Everybody waiting on somebody else. Well, I took the initiative. I ain't waiting on nobody. Mm-hmm. I decided to start putting it together because I remember hearing something about in my prison days, you know, uh, walking through the day room, I heard something say on TV said, if you build it, they gonna come. So I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna build the matriarchy. And everybody going to fall in fucking line because the matriarchs run there. I don't care who you is. You all got a mama. Everybody got an answer to their mama at the end of the day. Right or wrong. And if you get too out of line with mama, daddy going to bust you upside your shit. <laughs> and that's just the way it is. And you won't hear it. Probably won't hit too much from pops until you disrespect mama. You know, that's the way it is. Now it's time for the mothers to start healing the earth. Because they are our first healers, our first nurses, our first teachers, mm-hmm. our first educators, our first spiritual instructors, our first songbirds that sung the songs of liberation in that year. What the fuck happened to that shit? What's wrong with these people? They don't even sing liberation song. They sing booty shaking song. I mean, I don't got no problem with a booty shaking song when it's time to shake booties. But when it's time for liberation, where's the songs of liberation? You already you know. know. I, could, I could pick the liberation singers out in, in on two hands that made any any honest effort, and I can name the songs. But where the rest of them at? They all making music. You know, where the liberation music at? So we got to put that shit in code now. They don't want us talking no liberation shit. So now we turn it into mumble rap. They don't even know that even mumble rap is telling the story. Mm-hmm. It's saying that we're not allowed to say what the fuck we want to say, so we got to mumble under our breath. But this is supposed to be freedom of speech. Right? You're supposed to be allowed to say shit. But now they want to censor you for saying the shit that's true. It's okay to tell all the lies you want to as a Christian preacher. On Sunday, they never even talked about censoring them. But when you talk to raw and uncut and you use the word motherfucker in the middle of that shit, that ain't you the problem. There you know, yeah. And now, look, anybody tell you 
to be politically correct on a platform is a damn fool. And I'm going to tell you why. To be politically correct mean that the politics are correct. To be politically incorrect is a rebellion against the incorrect politics. So while you got these guys like Obama or Clinton, they all up there smiling and being politically correct, the politics ain't correct. Indeed. So you get a guy to come out the woodworks like a Khalid Muhammad. They don't want to hear. They don't hear that shit. Then the ones who's supposed to be using that for fodder to grow run from it. They look at Farrakhan like he did something wrong because he rebuilt what Elijah Muhammad had built and Wallace tore down. It ain't nothing personal against Wallace. It's just family business. Fredo could not do what Michael Corleone can do. Mm -hmm. He's not a strategist. He's lost in that position. So now you put Farrakhan in the position, he gave y'all the final call. Because if you motherfuckers don't raise this motherfucker they call Hiram, I do it. Now go ask him, did he do it? Ask him, was he an instrumental key part in raising of Hiram Abiff, the master builder, who they was waiting for a master to be raised by the lion's grip and a lion's paw. Mm -hmm. Ask him, was he instrumental? Ask him, did his voice shake the soul of a motherfucker to make him come out of the slumber? Ask him, don't ask me. Ask him, he know what the fuck going on. Ask him. You know, anybody got any doubt, call him up and ask him, did you shake that motherfucker that hard for real? Gotcha, Ask Malachi, was he part of it? You know? Mm -hmm. So sooner or later, somebody gonna have to answer this shit. Now, my thing right now is the only people I'm concerned about at this time, motherfuckers on the street, I ain't worried about none of them. I want to see me and Abu Jamal on the street. You know what I'm talking about? Indeed, bro. I want to see uh, uh, Mutula Shakur on the street. That's what I'm talking about. I want to see Seiko Dinga mm -hmm. if he's still living. You know? Mm -hmm. I want to see these guys on the street. I want to see the motherfucker just walking down the street with Larry Hoover and Jeff Ford, brothers. Been brothers the whole time. Yeah. Trying to wake the same motherfucker up. Because he's going to put it all together and we're going to put this shit out in the open. And here it is. We're in the public domain now. So the matriarchal call is when the mothers of the land decide to congregate to restore the land. That's this right. is what the women do. Once the men is ready to go to war for real, for real, the women have a meet. If the women say, tear this bitch up, they're going to pull the kids into seclusion. And ain't going to be nothing but the men out there to fight. Figure this shit the fuck out. You know? Yeah. Because this, this is ridiculous. Most of this comes from running from the power of self. Not wanting to develop your inner self. You being outworked by everybody else, but it's your shit that they training in. They are working you and you lazy. You're a lazy champion. You don't want to train for the opponent. You're training for the fight of his life. And you want to lay around and eat bonbons and cake while he eating carrot, drinking carrot juice and eating whole pineapples. You want to eat bonbons and cake. And while he running 15 and 20 miles a day, you want to do two, three miles. You want to slack off because you used to do five. When he do 20 rounds of motherfucking sparring, you want to do three, and you think you did enough because you got this many wins. You can't never stop training to win until you get tired of fighting. You sometimes might have to change up your tactics, your strategies, and your methods. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We've covered every motherfucking area of people activity to redeem ourselves without eating their face behind their back. Right? Mm -hmm. So we win the conjure war. We restore the matriarch. 
This shit a rap. Now we get to go to the type of ideas of thought. No big eyes, no little you's. The five is just as important as the six. Uh-huh. The red is just as important as the blue. The black is just as important as the white. They all got a different fucking function. Use it for what it's worth and keep it in its place. Indeed, bro. So Then Buddha Ali said, under your own vine and fig tree, right? That means tribe to fuck up. That's what that means. Uh-huh. Right on, bro. So, bro, mortuary call. Uh, like we spoke earlier, saw a lot of information that you've been sharing actually and mm-hmm. the work behind it so uh please share your you know what you can disclose your work on the uh, mature call i'm going to call it essence or energy especially in this time okay so the energy work for me was part of my shamanistic duties When they call it, a lot of them call it light workers and whatnot. And what it is, is um, like fortune tellers learn to read the uh, crystal ball or tarot cards. And then you have those like in the motherland, they read the goat and trails or the cow and trails, you know. And they normally do these at some kind of ceremony or ritual. Even if it's a mini ritual for like a tarot reader, has a mini ritual they do when they set up. But anyway, it's calibrate energies so that you can read, I call it the hieroglyphics of the universe. Mm -hmm. Every every movement in the universe is written with a definition in the book of eternal life. When you understand how to read the hieroglyphics of the universe, you're not reading the same language that you read in English or Japanese or French or Chinese. You read an entirely different language. Yeah. Part of my duties in there's a witch doctor or shaman is to translate what I see as close to what you can understand for the person I'm talking to as possible to tell them what the spirit is saying is in their path. This is what you need to do or don't do. This is what I see. If you watch, you just look for this sign, this sign, and this sign, right? Most people don't take that shit serious. They think it's entertainment. No, it's not entertainment. And there's not nothing cute or funny about it. It is what it is. And so um, reading those energies is the same as reading hieroglyphics. A heavily melanated person that's from the um, Nile Valley can go sit in front of the hieroglyphics and and reach what they call them, um, the, the alpha state, alpha wave state of the brain. Then they no longer are looking at pictures. Those pictures animate like a cartoon and tell a story for the person that's melanated they exaggerate it in the movies and this is the part that people don't get yeah movies give you an exaggeration of what is really taking place with you when you have in your experience Mm -hmm. so the same thing i just talked about where you have this uh the coming alive or the animation of the hieroglyphics it's not like they show in the movies where they come off. It's not like that. It's like you just automatically know what it's saying as you scroll down and with your eyes. You just automatically know because it's in your genetic code to know. And your genetic code has something on it called the governor. The mm-hmm. governor keeps you from accessing the information that's above your pay grade. You know, and so... I got to be able to translate it to the highest levels all the way to the lowest levels. Gotcha. Right. So the only way you can do that is you got to get to the top. And when I was getting these knocks, I didn't understand why they would make me feel the way we call them knocks. This goes back to the um, spiritualist research of the early 1900s when they called it rapping and tapping. Gotcha. Rapping and tapping is a carryover from old Louisiana country that became known as the blues and jazz uh-huh. and soul and rock and roll. Uh-huh. They all brought in a different piece to the puzzle. 
the rapping and tapping is the playing of the ancient drum, the ceremonial African drum. That's why everything is based around the drum and music. It's a ceremony from the rock concert to the church, to the mass G and whatever instruments they play there to India when they playing the cymbals with the drum. It's all a ritual. Indeed. Because the earth has started to deteriorate till almost 98% of the earth's population requested mother earth to change the current conditions. And because over here, we stayed in this condition so long because once the Moors got in the trap with us in the Conjure Wars, we was the same level of stuck in that shit. Nobody ain't know how to get out of it. So they just keep repeating the same dumb shit over and over. That's why you got the series of fallen leaders. Rise up, fall. Rise up, fall. Because they are not finding the blind spot. No matter whether they the Moors or whether they the Amarus that was already here. Uh -huh. They both got trapped in the conjure, throwing conjure balls at each other. Trapped each other to the point where neither one of them can find a way out. So now, because Garvey recognized what key was missing called the Gorilla Key, and Prince Hall and Absalom John recognized the conjure at play in the lodge. This is what made them set up the Prince Hall Lodge. And they went to make sure that these people over here don't give them no shit. That's why they went over to Europe to get their first charter. They didn't want to charter them over here because they didn't want us into the information. Once they got into the information, Noble Drew Ali, along with Marcus Garvey, W.E.B. Dubois, and Elijah Muhammad, put it all in the public domain. They played flea flicker, keep away. Uh -huh. They weren't the only ones. It was some that we thought was our sworn enemies. They were still putting the secrets in the public domain so you could get the keys. Huh. Like J. Edgar Hoover, who was a mulatto that everybody, and he was the spook who sat by the door. Yeah. You know, that's the spook who sat by the door who figured out how to use the gangs in order to bring us some insight into the hood. Use this shit, let them, let them run them up, but at the same time, give them literature. Help them learn their shit. They're going to tribe up automatically. We all tribed up now. What's the fucking hold up? The hold up is the people cowards. Our people that have been under the oppression. White people have been trying to, what we call white people is not even white people. There you go. But the ones they so-called white people, the pale-skinned people, fighting harder for the dark-skinned people and the dark-skinned people running from the truth. Running from that shit. Nobody Drew Ali said the end, I can count how many of y'all gonna be saved on one hand and have fingers left over. What the fuck that tell us? Surely our children should suffer from a lack of knowledge to an extreme degree. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is where we at with it. So um what we do with the energies and how we read them tell us where the trap's at. From the conjure. The conjure leaves a residual. It's like gunpowder residue. Everybody got to pay for their own dirt. Whether you break a mirror on the crossroads called the high conjure to shatter the minds of the gods, which you're not supposed to do. Or whether you do some low conjure to try to take another woman, husband, or wife. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. You got to answer for your dirt. If you worked hard and you were denied what you had coming, don't worry about that shit. They can't take it from you. You're going to get your shit. Uh -huh. If you get your head out your ass and realize who you are. Uh -huh. This our shit. Ice Sean Combs, Bad Boy Records. Call Marion Suge Knight. Ask him. Ask James Prince. We all in this shit together and we coming up. You know, 
Various ones of us got our different reasons for joining me into one motherfucking march. Some of us, it was Tulsa, Oklahoma in the Black Wall Street episode. Some of us, it was the Philadelphia bombers of John Africa in the Move movement. For others, it was the Rosewood incident. For some, it was still carryover from the non-ending Seminole War that never ended. That never ended. So speak on this, bro. Right. So they tell us that the Seminole War lasted three to four hundred years. But what they don't tell you is the Seminole Wars never fucking ended. All they did was went into the inner city. And this is why they have Jeff Ford over there right now talking about he was trying to get he was trying to make a deal with Gaddafi. He's the fucking general in the Seminole Wars. Shaka Zulu in this bitch. But his people don't even understand what's going on, so they don't even know they're supposed to ride with him no matter what the fuck happens. Mm -hmm. But they just let him go by himself. I'm, I'd am i be surprised if he want to fuck with these motherfuckers when he come home. Him or Larry. Larry a little more forgiving than Chief Malik. He don't take that bullshit. And these motherfuckers been on bullshit. There's no way them brothers are supposed to have been in prison this long. Any of them. Any of them, they are freedom fighters. When the people leave, they freedom fighters, and the freedom fighters stop fighting. There is no fight left. You are permanently oppressed. It's just as fortunately, some of the women had a, the foresight to see this shit. The women was the ones who, when they when these men fell, they the ones took the fight to the children. This is how we got to do it. We can't do it like we've been doing it because they're kicking our ass. Gotcha. And so they start calling the ancestral calls, right? The ancestral calls or the matriarchal call of the ancestors, however you want to put it, is an old ancient voodoo rite. And um, you, <coughs> a lot of people in the, um, like Tariq Baker tell you the story about, uh, uh, the Legba calling the Ogun. They call them next in line. No, they fucked up now because they got the Legba. They got the whole tribal clan of elders on this planet for the first time since the beginning. Mm -hmm. The men and the women, the whole Orisha are present for the first time since the beginning. That's how bad this shit got. And you can't never out, outthink the Orisha because they've been here through it all. There ain't nothing you can come up with they haven't already conquered. Gotcha. So now that the old goon, that old goon is on deck, they, they, they got an answer to that shit. It's not personal. The only thing about old goon is he don't care about who, who started it or who's going to end it. He just want it over, fixed, and fair. That's it. If you got it coming and you earned it, pay that motherfucker what you owe him and keep the shit moving. If you owe him your head, then buy with your goddamn head. If you owe him a hundred dollars and give him his hundred dollars. Right. Pay what you owe in due proportion so that you can balance the scale. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's all nothing personal, just family business. Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, coming now, before, you know, going on a call of the story again, uh, just want this one just struck me. So you're around Michigan, you know? Yeah. For me, uh, I've been to sacred places on the uh, Antilles and, uh, you know, near uh, even the Great Lakes. So Great Lakes, for me, it's a sacred place you're vibrating actually around that place. So could you tell to the people, uh, Rod, one of the uh, mystical or metaphysical events or even experience that you had, you know, surrounding the, uh, the land of Michigan or even the Great Lakes that's nearby? Oh, I get them all the time. I get them so much, they're so common to me. I mean, I could go- Figure it out, yeah. Experiences all day, but you know, there's only one right hand on Mother Earth. And that's the what we call the murder mitt in Michigan. Please repeat that name again, bro. I said there's only one right hand of the Mother Earth. 
And it's what we call the murder mitt, the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. Just like Italy the boot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the Cosa Nostra. Cosa Nostra is the origin of La Familia, uh, what they call the mafia. Yeah. They mean La Familia, it's a family. Yeah. Right? So they was teaching family etiquette, family hierarchy over there. Right? But that's also where Vatican Rome is in the boot. Mm -hmm. See? And Sicily is the redhead stepchild of Italy where all the Hannibal's soldiers' children were exiled to. Right on. Right? So they put them down there because they was the darker skin and they were easy to recognize. So then that didn't work for very long because the Romans, which was actually Etruscan Moors, Mm -hmm. had everybody in Europe from Cordova all the way up into what we call the Prussian Empire that became Russia. Mm -hmm. They had them enchanted with um, domestic arts. And then some of the things some of the people were doing was unsavory. And it caused the people of the land to rebel, which we call them pale skins. But all of them wasn't pale. And all of them wasn't dark. And that's what the problem come in is when you talk about American uh, skin based racism, it's an artificial construct. So you never know that they got nothing to do with the skin color. Exactly. As long as you fighting over skin color, you will never know that the white is a chest turn. In law, it means the attacker. Uh -huh. In black, in law is a chest turn. It means the defender. That's all it is. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing more than that. You, the caste system was used to implement the skin-based race system to keep you from seeing the chess game, the fifth dimensional galactic chess game. Uh -huh. Conjure encompassed every aspect of human life on the unified field theory scenario. You know, everything is interconnected. So work it to the singularity is the method to the problem. It forms a cone. And the cone forms a uh, telescope. If you want to see distant past, you got to look at distant future. If you want to see distant future, you got to see distant past. Uh -huh. It's a cycle. It's a loop. Yeah. An infinity loop. But the problem is, is the infinity loop is an accident that was caused on purpose in a collider explosion. To so jump out of the infinity loop is to wake up at the exact right time to push the consciousness out of the loop so that we can continue to ascend on an upward and evolving level. We out of the loop now. You know, it just needed the right amount of sisters to be awake at the right amount of time and had the right amount of direction and the right tone. All that shit over with. Right on. All that shit over with. Now it's about, we at the part of the game where public, is, uh, public disclosure of all of the tragic shit that they uncovered comes to the open, the matriarch started to get the call to Chicago to meet with Mother Khadijah because she's the highest matriarch on the land right now since uh, Reefa Franklin died. Uh -huh. And she's also the highest matriarch that's willing to unify the matriarch. So, I mean, once it's all said and done, the, when they all send somebody to her and they had they're going to announce it from Mas Mariam, right there in Chicago, Stony Island. It is what it is. This shit a wrap. Uh -huh. So no more, you know, everything that had to be resolved from educational issues to political issues to the lobbyists is the problem here. The interim government is the problem here. The interim government that was supposed to be honoring the treaties trying to take over. While the, we was doing our kind of war, these bankers from Prussia, the Prescotts, the Bilderberg, the Bushes, they all came in and tried to steal our shit while we was fighting our kind of war. Well, this how we this how family handled family business. And some outsiders came and tried to sneak in and get our shit. They all got caught. They all got caught. They supposed to stay out of our fucking business and continued on with their contract to mediate the land while we fight our kinds of war. 
But no, they want to take over. They figure that once we get so confused fighting each other, we won't know what the fuck going on. They can run off with everything. Trick no good. Yeah. Trick no good. When we have a, we, we fight, we get in the street and we tear each other ass up. Fisty cuffs, guns, knives, all that shit. We eternal beings. We ain't gonna let no strange motherfucker come in and just take over our shit. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna do that. So we stopped fighting each other. That's what Noble Drew Ali did. It was one group that wanted to continue on fighting. That's what made the split with the Morris Science Temple. Mm-hmm. Instead of unifying and, and, and overthrowing this motherfucking oppression for real, because the shit didn't got out of hand now. You know, some of them think it got out of hand with the Watch riots. Some of them don't feel it was out of hand until Lil Yummy got murdered. Some of them felt it got out of hand when Three R. Martin got killed. Others felt that it got out of hand when they started busting up the Black Panther Party, killed Fred Hampton and Mark Clark. Some of them feel it was out of hand when they killed Lil Bunch or when they killed motherfucking uh, uh, George Jackson, the Soledad brother. Because they say he had a gun in his afro, as if you can't see that. So that's the dumbest shit in the world for a strategist like that to do. And they expect okay. us to believe everything they say. The motherfuckers told us Charles Manson was trying to start a race war when he was trying to stop war. And the niggas fell for it. Then they got us scared to even call each other niggas because we think we're talking about niggas. We ain't no goddamn niggas. We niggas, N A G A S. Mm-hmm. We the kings on this bitch. And we'll fight amongst each other, as Pac say, but I promise you this, we'll burn this bitch down, get us pissed. Yeah. So with the $5 Indians being coming over in servant capacity, being trusted with the motherfucking secrets, you know, Mm -hmm. in order for these motherfuckers to raise this motherfucker back up and reclaim the land at the end and the conclusion. July the 4th, 2019, the contract of the interim government of the corporation known as the United States of America expired. The corporation is a merged corporation from the Virginia company, a slave trading company, and the Northwest Trade Trade Slave Trading Company merged. They went to Philadelphia and established a, a trust contract and undermine the contract of the people that we put in charge. That's why this capital's down in Philadelphia. They moved it to D.C., a district. It has no motherfucking home. They said we landed our land mass on their ship. That's what they said. So they was exercising the law of the high seas on our land mass because they said our land mass fell on their ship. Mm Mm-hmm. And they ship was called Plymouth Rock. More specifically, the Great Plymouth was the name of it. They call it the Plymouth Rock because right before that motherfucker crashed into our land, it was rocking back and forth side to side in the storm. And they said, and the Plymouth rocked. Uh And then it crashed into Gibraltar. I mean... They got they got us thinking shit on one side of the ocean that's on the other side. And that's quite frequent, this thing though. Right. They call that the that's called the great flip. Mm-hmm. When you find out where it really go and you put it in place and you claim that aspect of it. I didn't put all I didn't put everything where it go now. Mm-hmm. So uh, at the end, what we got to do now, we had to get a shaman behind the speaker's desk to occupy the ship that's on our land so we can flip that shit back to us because they land, they ship fell on our land. It wasn't all the way around. But on the international court under the Uniform Commercial Code, they said our land crashed into their ship. You gotta think about that shit for a minute now. How the fuck did our nine moving leg crash into your moving ass ship? This was their claim. Yeah. This is how they get the power. 
This is what made them set up the District of Columbia as the crash site. So they had to box it in. Why do you box it in? Don't you put tape around a court and box it in? Mm -hmm. Why do you do that? So you don't disturb the crime scene, right? Yep. And you keep all of those wayfarers out of there that don't belong while you process the crime scene. Go look at it now. White House is fenced in with military guard. The, the state building is fenced in with military guard, or what you call the Capitol building. Well, what, if this shit fits in, what the fuck is Joe Biden them doing with this dog and pony show they doing? You know what I'm saying? From Castle Rock Studio. The fuck is that shit? So please, please expand on this with your intel, bro. You know, the whole illusion things going on. Uh, okay. So uh, part of our part of our redemption process requires us to use every stratagem of war. Yeah. One of those stratagems of war includes the um, extraction of what we call critical assets from the battlefield at time that they may be removed by the enemy. It also gives us the added advantage of using that soldier's valuable intel from being boots on the ground to now being in the war room, formulating strategy, right? So a lot of people that you think was literally murdered or died some strange they ain't dead. They were extracted. Now we got two groups working on this process of extraction. One is the Scientology for those who don't look like us. And the other one is the Nation of Islam for those who look like us. They both doing the same thing, but they both doing it under different pretenses. This shit, you're not going to get out this shit without some heavy motherfucking strategizing going on. And that's where I've been focused on the strategy. Uh -huh. so I gave them all the keys. Now we, you know, now it's about the time that it all come out into the public domain. And that's the intent and the goal of uh, participating in this type of talk is to get the information out to the people so that they can understand what's taking place is the indigenous people of the land is reclaiming the land. All matriarchs are involved. That means your mother may not consciously tell you she involved, but even if she have a sense that she's involved because it's the call. And the call is a spiritual call. It's not nothing to do with no radio, TV, or none of that. It's internal for the women. Right? I can show you the structure and tell you the methods that they should be using, but only if they ask. I already gave it to what we call the high court clerk or the matriarch. She got the information. You know, she just got to make it public. She don't have to. She could sit on it now that I gave it to her because now the structure is in the women's hide. It's in they, it's in they collect consciousness now because they all connected like that. And once she got to see it, they all now know what to do. Right. But we don't know nothing about that shit because we idiots to the opposite sex. We don't understand the nature of the woman because we don't understand the nature of the man. So as long as we don't understand that, we're going to stay in conflict in the bedroom. We're supposed to be rocking that motherfucker all day and all night if we want to. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the attraction is that high. But you can't get the attraction that high under oppression. And it don't last long. That's why you had teenage pregnancy, highest under oppression. The more oppressed you be, the younger they start having babies. Why? Rapid turnover of the birth rate in order to accelerate the speed in which the divine ones become born. Right. The oppression makes the, the, the girls produce children at a younger age, pursue older, more viral men and stronger men. They strategizing through nature, strategizing on their behalf. They don't got to do shit. The harder you oppress it, the more nature work on their behalf. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they had to call to a system that's in place. They call Hiram forward. What that motherfucker here now? You know, 
And you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Once that motherfucker out, it's out. The genie out the bottle. Got you, bro. So that's 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 where we at with it now. What's next on the questions list? Yes, and um, that's uh, we're speaking about matricle, and especially for their sisters out there. So you know, by showing an analogy of what the Empress Virjachi from the Washita did, uh, could you share a, an analogy from her work and? what the sisters out there, you know, should embrace and recognize with. Okay, so the biggest thing that, that the Empress did was she challenged treaties. She challenged treaties using birthright because the birthright is superior to the treaty. And that's what made her win successful was over 69,000 acres of land and exiled all of their court system from the land because she exercised birthright. And that's the only thing that overrides the treaty. Well, now the treaty is expired. She done that before the treaty was expired. Uh -huh. When the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, they say it's the oldest known treaty still in existence. Well, it's not in existence as of July the 4th, 2019, it expired. Uh-huh. And the whole conjure war got to come to an end now because there's nobody to maintain the land. We had to restore the chieftains, the bays. And that's why in the Moorish Science Temple, you have a flag of the L's, but you don't have no flag of the bays. Most of them don't even know what it is. You know, and it's the flag of the bays that's the flag that the original indigenous people of the land flew to symbolize the power of the chieftain. So right now, we're still under the law. The law is the instructions given by the Moors to the interim government on how not to disrespect neither the base or the hell. They violated that series of instructions and now they ass is overthrown because they disrespected the position. They had to be given a right to rule because they was the last motherfuckers who never ruled. So now, under their right to rule, they fucked up. They let a motherfucker come in, step his foot in their house, and do for shit he wasn't supposed to. But they did it by the book. Uh -huh. They gave us the three knock. They gave us a World Trade Center knock in 1991. They gave us a federal building knock in 95. Then they gave us another World Trade Center knock in 2000, was it 2000, 2001? Three knots that they was going to move, move on us. Those are economic centers. The World Trade Center is an economic center, and the federal building was a government center. So they was telling us that they was going to take our money and take our government if we don't act. Well, I had no intentions on doing none of this shit. Because I didn't feel like we was doing what was necessary to win. We weren't doing our part. Even Bill Cosby said we ain't living up to the bargain. Everybody looking at him like he crazy. Like, what the fuck bargain you talking about? No matter what happened, we were supposed to walk in our, under our own vine and fig tree. We were supposed to set up shit everywhere we go to keep us advancing forward until now to make this shit easy. The only motherfuckers did it right was Elijah Muhammad, Noble Trolley, W.E.B. Du Bois and motherfucking Marcus Garvey. They did it right. Uh -huh. Then when the people no longer could benefit from their help, what they do, crash that shit and start over. When they start taking that shit to be like it, like, no, they taking it the wrong way. Crash that shit and start over. Gotcha. You know? Uh -huh. So when the UNIA crashed, is when the motherfucking Morris Science Temple rose. Look at the books. It's right there. It ain't hard to find. Look at the dates. When the Morris Science Temple crashed, that's when the Nation of Islam rose. The UNIA gave birth to Pan-Africanism. Marcus Garvey hold the title for that, but he don't hold it alone. Dubois hold the title for creating Pan-Africanism. What do Africa even got to do with this? We ain't from no fucking Africa. Indeed. 
It's because they actually brought some people from over there to confuse the birthright. Which is key, yeah. The problem with that is, is y'all brought the motherfuckers over here and Garvey knew the key to wake these motherfuckers up. He brought the gorilla key with him. Uh -huh. So that's why you got to go back and read the whirlwind speech. Because through the whirlwind speech, if you know the character, you know exactly what the fuck going on, then you're going to get ready and you're going to get on deck. Gotcha. <clears throat> uh -huh. So that's what's up, bro. Mm -hmm. Thanks for this. Uh, we'll go for a couple of minutes, bro, because I know time is running uh, for, mm -hmm. your, for, for your schedule. Uh, yeah. Time traveling. Let's say the uh, hijack. Um, there's effects, and we've seen it. There was at some point different timelines, and people actually, you know, vibrating to different frequencies. Could you share uh, some of your intel regarding this, Rod? Time travel. Yeah. Time okay. Travel, so, yeah. Um, I look at time travel like a tarot reader look at cards, right? So um, once you learn the conjure, one of the things you learn, they took it out and put it into a science called control remote viewing, where you can actually mentally move back in time through your um, ancestry. You can actually experience parts of the life of each one of your ancestors. It's, it's a couple of little caveats to that, but by doing that, you can go back in time in the mind. The mind doesn't have a, a, a limiter on future, past, or present like the physical body does. Mm -hmm. The mind can move through time and dimensions. It can move through the darkness and the light, and it is the only thing that can do that. And mine is the consciousness of the universe that comes through the echo of the silence. It becomes its own observer in each one of us to look at things from a different angle of light. And by putting these together in the physical form, we begin to travel dimensionally or linear timeline back and forth. But it's all meditative practice. That's why they told you, they told us, Christians tell you the transcend medi transcendental meditation is some kind of evil demonic shit. Because they don't want you waking up to fucking what you really is on the inside. Because as long as you allow yourself to feel like a victim, you're going to stay victimized. Mm -hmm. As long as you feel powerless, you're going to remain without power. As long as you feel defeated, you will remain defeated. And sooner or later, we the type of people, we're going to rebel against that shit. We're only going to take it for so long, then we're going to rebel. You might win, but you won't stay victorious over us. We might suffer a defeat, but we'll never be defeated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We might run into a bad situation, but we won't come out of it worse for the wear. You know, because we're going to try to transmute that shit at every turn. This is who we are. And that's why this shit they've been doing won't work on the on the, when you call it an ancestor. The problem is, but nobody called an ancestor. Gotcha. So Garvey, Dubois, Elijah, go all the way back to Prince Hall and Absalom. They, they call on the ancestors now. What took five, six hundred years or only took about 60 years when you call in the ancestors when you put the right knocks in place. Uh -huh. But you let it get so bad that it took longer than it needs to take. When they're supposed to get this bad. But it got so bad that now, you know what I'm saying, it took longer than it was necessary. It took a hundred and something years of knocking instead of 10 or 20 years of knocking. This is a lifetime of a child. Uh -huh. you know, becoming an adult. Because the prayers of a nation is answered through the womb of the women. And the collective prayer, sooner or later, that shit gonna have to boil down to one motherfucker. 
by trial and by effort, by work and by suffering. And he's going to be stronger than everybody else. Not because he want to be, because he got to be, because there ain't nobody else left to do the job. Ain't nobody else left to do the dirty work. While all these Negroes running around in the churches and the mosques and chasing their tail, I'm, I'm, in there, I'm doing the real work. I see them. I see where they stuck at. I can't stop and unstick them right now. I got to get across this finish line first, and then they'll see what the fuck going on. One of us got to win. So I decided to win. Exactly. One of us got to think a little bit deeper than everybody else. And my OG, Larry Hoover, told me we ain't gang banging no more, nigga. We brain banging. Mm -hmm. So where the brain, where the gang at? Where the fight at? If we brain banging, where's the fight? Right? Yep. I didn't know that it was a place called a mastermind group where masterminds meet and go to war to play the strategy. But now that I know that, and I know that it's a mental war, I'm the most trained for the job, I'm not gonna lose. I'm not gonna, it's not that I'm not gonna lose because I'm better than nobody, because I'm outwork everybody else that think they wanna play. That's why, that's why I'm not gonna lose. I'm gonna out-train you, I'm gonna out-study you, I'm gonna out-exercise you, I'm gonna out-breath control your ass, I'm gonna out-hold my breath your ass, I'm gonna out Everything you do to get ready for this war, I'm going to double it up or triple it up. Because so when we get ready, when we go into this mastermind shit, if you ain't if you ain't out training, you're not going to win. Well said, man. You know? Yeah, well said, man. Well said. Um, final question, bro, because now time is running down. So um, I put it on my website. I've been, you know, through an other stellar system. Uh, I had some recalls, passing shit live on Earth. So, bro, you're a chief. Um, whenever you, either you communicate or you get together with, you know, with the other chief or chiefs or even, you know, chiefs, uh, women, uh, could you disclose what you can about the uh, communication with the commu okay, so, so the communication is primarily done through an old Navajo practice called wind talking. Um, the closest thing I could give you a reference, there was a movie uh, called Wind Talkers with um, the dude that played in La Bamba, wasn't it Rich, Richie something? Okay. But this is a movie about the wind talkers. We got a way to communicate where I can go and whisper at a tree over here in this part of the land and tell the tree that I need a chief in South America's most southern point to get the message. The tree would then relay the message to Mother Earth, who will use everything in her power to write the message in the hieroglyphics of the universe for the other chieftains to read it. Uh -huh. And it's so tailor-made to the individual chief to read it at his level. So he might not even know he's the chief yet, but he noticed that he sees something that nobody else can see. That means that he was born to become the chief. This is what happened to me. I got memories of being born my early childhood rituals when I was months, not years, months, two, three month old rituals. Most people can't remember being nine months old. I remember being in my mama womb. That's not normal memory. Uh -huh. I wanted to know why I don't have, why I got better than normal memory, but I was the worst student in school. This didn't make sense to me. Right. But when I realized that I was one of the chiefs of the land and that I had to figure out a way out of this shit, then it made a whole lot of sense. I wouldn't let them indoctrinate me is what the problem was. But I had to see how they was teaching the kids that was, that was coming up with me. That they were indoctrinating so I can know how to break the motherfucking um, cycles. So we use a whole different language than um, English to communicate. 
They don't even use words. And we call it reading the hieroglyphics of the universe. Biblically speaking, they would call it a reading the writing on the wall. The hieroglyphics in, that's written on the wall is the reference point to what we're talking about. I see. I see. So thank you for sharing this, uh, mm -hmm. Rod. So we're coming to an end. So then again, your host, uh, Tainui Jail, we had for the last uh, past hour, a uh, Rod A's, a chief shaman. Uh, the information that I received channeling was a warrior as well. So uh, I got to say, uh, this brother is an elder. And at the same time, too, a living library. And this is really from the frequencies that I'm getting it. So brother Rod, uh, thank you, man. You know, much honor to you, your work. Uh, people might not hear it or see it, you know, concretely, but the ones that are in tune with these frequencies, you know, of love, especially, uh, mm -hmm. will know it, you know, so yeah. much appreciated, bro. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'm glad you had me on here. Um, just make sure you send me uh, uh, information so I can share it. No doubt, no doubt. So before leaving, Bro Rod, did you want to share quickly uh, your words of wisdom, especially now in these times? Well, don't, what I tell most people, just do what you already know is right and you won't need nobody to correct you. Mm -hmm. Be your own worst critic, so any criticism you receive from externally can only compliment you. Don't take none of it personal. We all playing in this game of life. And it's each one teach one is the name of the game. And if each one teach one, we all gonna reach some. You know, until we reach a hundred monkey effect. That's called critical mass in, in nuclear fusion, fission. And once we get the critical mass, then they gonna wake up and realize who really on that ass. You know, so... Um, that's what I'm gonna leave y'all with. Sisters is on their on their job, and then we about to see some shit within the next two weeks. All so, right. Bro. Yeah. So thanks for having me on the show, and we are gonna do it again. Hopefully next time I'll be in a better position to to give a better show. You no doubt, bro, man. Uh, where I definitely want you to be back on the show because I know you have, you know. Lots of vital information for the people. So then again, your host ID AGL. So uh, I'll let you know, you know, when I'll put up the links and the full session with session number 15 with Rod A's. So thank you, people. Thank you, Brother Ross. Thank you.